training. Today I'm reviewing the 511 Covert Box Pack um, Tactical Pack. They call it a tactical pack because it does have a lot of tactical features on it, but it's also covert and which appeals to many. For me, I'm 50 50 on that. Covert, I mean, or not, it doesn't really matter per se. Depends, I guess, on the situation, what you're doing. But for those who are interested in a covert type back pack where you don't have the Velcro all over, you don't have the Molly strung out everywhere, this is a good pack for those kind of conditions. As you can see, it doesn't have any Velcro, any Molly anywhere. It's made out of 1680 denier uh, nylon. Uh, it's got Duraflex buckles, YKK zippers. Um, that being said, today, in today's world, you know, bag, bag manufacturers really got to step their game up because everything or every time a new co uh, or a company makes a new pack or something, it's just a notch above what was out. And if you don't keep up with it, uh, you're probably going to lose business. That being said, 511 has really hit the mark with this pack. It's got a lot of good features. However, there are some negatives. So stay with me. We're going to go through them. And I'm going to show you the 511 Covert Box Pack. I'll be right back. All right, guys. Ed back with the Top of the Line Training. Like I said, if you're in the 511 uh, Covert Box Pack, um, like I said, again, nylon, 1680, YKK zippers, Duraflex buckles. If you look here, let's start at the back here in the pack. You got this laser cut Molly here on the on the uh, straps. Um, that's like a new thing. Almost every company is coming out with these laser cut um, Molly, if you will. So some have it on their bag, but this this Molly is. So you can attach items here if you needed to. Um, you do have a chest strap, your flex buckle, like I said. Uh, it's, it's elastic, which is nice. Um, gives a little play there. Here you have. It's very. It's padded very well. It's mesh. Um, feels really good for breathability and all that kind of stuff. Uh, very comfortable to wear. Um, I, like uh, I haven't said this yet, but I've used this pack now for probably eight weeks as an EDC pack. I've also used it for traveling, and um, it's performed exceptional. It's got a lot of nice features, like I said, so let's get into those. Again, you have adjustable chest straps, or chest strap, shoulder straps. Comes with this waistband. Uh, I don't know if that's really needed or not, but it's there. <clears throat> so, the pack itself opens in a, um, what do I want to call it, a, a water bag or, or water, dry bag configuration. It's got these two compression straps on the side, pop those, and then the bag opens up like so. Back that off a tad. So again, you can see here, you can roll this down. Now this really appealed to me. I thought that, you know, you can get a lot of stuff in here. Now, I got this set up as a travel bag right now. And I want to show you some of the stuff that I had in it. And basically clothing, because I wanted to take one bag with clothing and a few extra items if needed. And this really worked really well for that. I don't know the cubic inch on it. Maybe you go to 5.11 and check that out. But I will try to research that and put it in the box below. But anyway, like I said, you can also, on this uh, closure here, you have the compression straps on the side that you clip into. Or you can just roll it around and clip it into itself like so. And that seals it up. So either way you want to do that is fine. This is a little faster for getting in and out. This here is more for like hauling and whatnot, not really getting in and out at every every hour or so, you know. So anyway, basically I got a bunch of clothing in here. I got my Kuyu rain jacket. 
here I have a Kafaru pullout, and you'll be seeing a, a review on these. Uh, and you'll be seeing them a lot in my videos coming up. These things are really nice. Uh, only negative on these things, I wish that they would come in different colors so you could color code different items. But basically what I have in here is underwear and socks. And then here is something else I'll be doing a review on, but this is a backpack that comes out of the pouch. It folds within itself. But what's nice about it too, it has a pocket here that you could store things in here if you wanted to, you know. I do have a magazine in here right now, but the point is, is I carry this with me everywhere I go for an additional storage or carry, uh, carrying items. Really, what's in the bag right now is not so much important, but I want to show you the volume it can get in here. Like I said, I don't know the cubic inch and stuff, but this just gives you an idea. Shirt, shorts, um, a lot of t-shirts in here. Roll, of course. I just want to show you, give you an idea of what you can, what volume you can get in here. A pair of pants and another t-shirt. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's pretty deep. Look, you can see that goes, it takes up from my shoulder all the way down. I got my fingers extended now, so the base, uh, the bottom of my shoulder, all the way to my finger. So that's, that's good depth. But anyway, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shirts, pair of shorts, pair of pants, another small pouch, socks and underwear, and a rain jacket in there. And I could have put more things in there if I wanted to. Okay, so that's the inside. All right, <laughs> so let's go through the pockets uh, setup and what they have here. Basically, you have you have a back zipper pocket here, one here. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And then you have one here, six. So you have six pockets, external pockets on this thing. Let's start with this top one right here. Um, lighter in my lighter case I always I all unless I'm flying of course I don't go anywhere without uh, fire the ability to make fire I've got uh, some beats headset extra ammo I don't even have that gun with me now but anyway some headsets uh, or earbuds and a uh, lens cloth Batteries, a couple D's. I have a uh, Spider Co. Uh, Rescue Junior serrated edge. Very deadly as far as um, if I were to attack you and just rip you apart with this, it would hurt and kill you. But also good for cutting through clothing or anything like that. Okay, and then I have, okay, that's it, I believe. Okay, so I said there are some negative features here. And this is one of them here. I love the pocket being right here. It's really great. Now, the idea behind this is, if you were in law enforcement or some kind of unit of the nature, this pulls out. This is like micro Velcro. And you can take your badge or you can take some kind of patch and put it here. But I say a bunch of bullshit to that. It, the, the pocket itself is too much of a hindrance to the bag and I'll explain that in a minute but first of all your whole damn unit's going to have to have this kind of pack and then and I can, I can tell you right now there's probably not even one police unit out there that has this pack I don't know there's a lot of police units they may but who the hell is going to put a patch in here with a badge on it then you got to take off the bag pull this shit out then you're going to put your pack back on, you're going to run through wherever you're running through or walking or whatever. It's, it's bullshit, it's, in my opinion. The idea may be good, but the functionality of the bag is lost because of this stupid ass pocket. Like I said, I love the pocket being there. It's very good, 
as far as being there and being able to stow items, but I'm just going to give you a quick showing of why it's no good. I don't have a lot of battery on my, I'm charging my uh, camera right now, so I kind of stay in that configuration there. But let me just show you. So every time you go into this freaking pack, you see this right here? That's that stupid ass pull out pocket that is in the way when I want to go in here. When I want to go in here, let me get a flashlight in here. Hold on, I got one. I want to make sure you can see this. Sorry for the delay. Okay, so you can see the pocket right there. So every time you reach in there, you have to go through the pocket. And then when you reach in and grab something out, you got to go see and you think well yeah it just flops yeah it flops in your damn way especially if you're in a hurry and you want to see down in there and see what you're grabbing it's in your way and a lot of times things get caught on see how it cocks around right there it gets caught on stuff and it's just bad design is what i'm saying the idea of having the the pull out pocket for identification purposes okay but the concept I don't think is good because, like I said, here I am. I'm a cop per se. Okay, I gotta pull this. Uh, I got shit in the pocket number one, so now I gotta take all the crap out of the pocket, right? I gotta take all this stuff out. Where am I gonna put that? Okay, I can dump it in the bag. Okay, but still. So now I'm gonna pull out my pocket. There's my bag. Now I'm going to put this pack back on. Yeah, it's nice for identification purposes. But I just, it's just stupid. Anyway, but I love the pocket being there. It's very nice. It's very handy for quick grab items like a knife, a lighter, whatnot. Okay, so let's go to the bottom pocket because I just pulled my flashlight out of there. I got my uh, uh, Surefire here. I always have a flashlight with me. I highly recommend, at minimum, having, beside your cell phone, beside your cell phone, having a flashlight, some kind of flashlight with you. And if you're carrying a gun, you need to have some kind of tactical light. I don't give a shit who makes it, Surefire, Phoenix, um, whatever, Through Night, whatever. Have a flashlight with you. So anyway, that being said, coming back here to the bottom pocket, nice. Uh, pocket here really holds a lot of stuff I've got a tourniquet I've got uh, some uh, awesome things. Uh, I got some business cards I got one of my mini first aid pouches basically bandage two by two and some uh, pain relief and acid stuff like that I have couple pairs of rubber gloves and then I have oh, some earplugs so I'll just in there but then I have my uh, my uh, major mid not major but it's, it's still a small med kit this here I can reach in and grab band-aids and some pills if needed but this here has got a little step up to that um, also shows my blood type shows the med kit this is triple seven gear uh, micro pouch, I believe it is. But in here, I've got gloves, got a uh, farmer, Swiss, Swiss Army farmer, got some cordage, got some and got some pills. Uh, but the major med kit is right up in here. Got some biofreeze, but this is a dry lock bag, um, and I've got quick clot in here. All kind of band-aids, burn gel, all kind of little things. You can really, by getting one of these, just this alone, you throw it in your pocket, you can really pack a good little med kit. So, you know, something to look into, uh, really, really neat to have, uh, or good to have, and they're, they're, they're easy to carry, neat to have, because um, you never know when you might have a headache. Reach right in, grab some 
uh, medicine, whatever. So, so I've got all kind of rubber gloves in here. I got something else here. I'm not sure. Oh, some more. That's another one of my med kits, uh, band aids and such like that. I think I got all the band aids in here, band aids, two by two, things like that. And I got all the pills and quick clot and burn gel, stuff like that in here. Anyway, med kit. So you can see here. This is a pretty good size uh, pocket. Shine the light in there. See if you can see that. I don't know, but it's it's pretty good size. <clears throat> so that's the bottom pocket. Okay. So, uh, and one thing I talk about a lot about bags is something I call pocket stealers. You jam this full, it takes away from this pocket. And that does happen some with this, but it's really not that bad. You can get in here and get your items out as needed. So going into this pocket here, I've got a holster for a weapon in here. And I have an uh, extra pair of glasses. Can't see a damn thing about them, and that's all I have in here. But you can see this is another nice size pouch. You can get a lot of stuff in it. On this side here, I have uh, my other Kafaru pullout. I'll get to that in a minute. Got a pack of wet ones. I don't go anywhere without them. If you've never taken a wet one bath, you don't know what you're missing. But as well as uh, taking care of business or whatnot. Right there you go. You never know when you want to clean your hands or whatnot. And that's all I have in there. Now this, again, this is just an example of what I have or what I've carried. Usually everyday carry, because I work out at work, I usually have at least two or three sets of clothes. And what I mean by that is some shorts, a couple t-shirts. Then I carry supplements and things like that in here, a lunch in here, and other things to do with work. So, you know, I usually have this bag pretty well packed. Here's my Kafaru pullout, my mini uh, Kafaru pullout. And what I just started doing with this is I just sort of call it the Possible's pouch. Little things that, you know, you might need through the day. Toothbrush, toothpaste, toothbrush, you know, from the airline. Uh, I got some um, Breathe Right strips in here. I got some uh, lens cleaner, uh, some coffee. I've got a jack cord that allows me to connect uh, iPhone to a speaker if needed. Uh, some, uh, what is this here? This is uh, hand sanitizer, some uh, anti antacid pills, some uh, biofreeze, more biofreeze. Uh, got some nasal mist, got some cordage. Got a couple rolled up tissues, got a uh, USB cord for my uh, GoPro, got some. Uh, Hand sanitizer, uh, again, got a little D-hook, or D-ring. Uh, more antacid, fingernail clippers. I really highly recommend uh, carrying fingernail clippers with you in some place, in some kind of pack you carry, because come in handy, come in handy big time. But anyway, so, you know, this is just a little Possible's pouch. I carry, throw it in there. It really takes up no room. It's pretty, that's durable. Anyway, so in this main center here, this is your concealed carry pouch here. Um, here I have my Smith MMP Viking Tactical Edition. Badass gun, 9mm. Uh, love this gun, works really well. Uh, that's why EDC is unloaded, of course, right now. Whatever. Uh, just gun safety is paramount. Always remember that. Keep your finger off the trigger. It's the unloaded gun that uh, always kills someone or injures. Uh, in here is a bunch of micro Velcro. Um, you can place a holster in here if you wanted to. One of the universal holsters, mag pouch, flashlight. I did carry my gun and flashlight in here, but I just started just putting the gun in. Uh, now, it is, when, you, when I do have this thing packed, it is a little difficult to get up in here, but uh, it's not too bad. You still do it. Uh, 
Anyway, so that's that. Again, the, going back to the back panel here. Um, this here is another design flaw. And, well, there's two parts of it. One, here, you can open this up fairly well and get into it, but there's restraint here. And this needs to either have a little bit more material or be a little, maybe some elastic in here, in this section, that allows you to pull this and open it. Again, this stupid ass pocket gets in the way, but also it limits, it's, it's limited to this mouth of the bag of what you put in here. Now, don't get me wrong, you can get some stuff in here. I'm just saying that if it, this was elastic, I could get things in there a little bit easier. So this sort of fights with itself to open and put your items in. It also has a nice top grab handle here, as most do, most bags do nowadays. Uh, really nice, made well. This bag is made very well, so you'd be not disappointed in any shape or form with that. <coughs> so anyway, um, now when you look down in here, when you look down in here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but let me, look, let me get this up here. There is a divider here. Okay, that allows you to go down in. But that being said, it's the same part right here. Let me see if I can zoom in on that here a little bit. Okay, so right here is the back. So you fold this over. It just I've found it easy to do it instead of trying to get in like that. You fold this over. You have two zippers here, one here and one here. So. Um, anyway, uh, so here is, it opens up the back here, and then you can keep, right now I've got a couple books in here, uh, and, and a tablet, and, oh, I've got a Baco Laplander saw. Uh, I got this in here because I went to the woods, and I was uh, doing some limb cutting. But anyway, um, so you can put like a notebook in here. You could put on a 15-inch laptop, they fit. Um, and other items, whatever. I usually have this folder, plastic folder I carry with various documents in it and I can just slide it right down in there. <laughs> okay, now also it comes with, you put this little tab here and you have like a little admin storage area here. And you know, pens, and I don't know if you can see that good or not, but pens, paper, I have a little my little uh, notebook from a day timer. The old school way of taking notes and such. Um, but I have that. And I have uh, a couple pens, pens. And I have a uh, Spyderco uh, Annex 2. Okay. Love this Mannix too. Very nice knife. And so, in the, in the pack here, you can put a little more things in here. It's just like a little admin. Like I said, you got a room for a couple pens, a little bit fatter pouch, and then you have the whole area here. You can put whatever in there. But uh, that's all I have in here. But that's quite a bit of stuff, you know, uh, for this pack. It rides very comfortable and uh, made very well i'll say that all right guys uh this is the top of line training reviewing the 511 uh covert box pack i'll be back with you in a minute all right guys they're back with the top of line training and uh continuing on continuing on with the review of the 511 box pack um tactical bag now i've got this set up in a day hike or an overnight stay per se. Notice how I have the extra room here. This is where I put some food. I don't have any food in here. Just got it set up for an, uh, an example. But this is what <clears throat> this can carry uh, on a hike or an overnighter per se if you uh, if you wanted to do something like that. I got some uh, hand sanitizer. Garmin uh, 450T uh, 
Oregon 452. I got my med kit again. And that's all I got in that pocket. Come down here. Here, I've got a cheap little pair of binoculars, good for just checking things out, whatnot. It's just like they're like 10 by 20, something like that. I got some wet ones. Always need those when you go to the woods. In unison with the hand sanitizer, whatnot. Then I got a box of Laplander. If you know, and you've heard me say, I don't never go to the woods without this saw unless I'm taking a buck saw or something like that. The Baco Laplander compact workhorse, proven awesome tool. That's all I got in there. Oh, oh. And then I have a 511, as you were, a Spyderco uh, Rescue Junior, uh, just for <clears throat> uh, an extra knife if needed. And, um, Self-defense if needed. And then that's it. <clears throat> now one thing about this pack too. I'll get it up close to you. I could zoom in. I'm just going to bring it up close here. They have these little sort of like, uh, I believe Max Medition's calling them garage doors or garage whatever. But they're just little keepers for the head of your zipper. Which keeps it locked in there without... You know, it can still get caught on something pulled down, but it just stows the zipper head up in there. Nice little feature. <clears throat> Going in this other side pocket here. I have my uh, Open Out 6 with uh, uh, rod. Awesome setup here, kick ass. I first heard of these from Doug Wilson. I can't think of the guy's name. He puts these together out of Israel. But uh, I think about 40 bucks. Um, I'll tell you, love this knife. I was on, I used to not care for these at all. I never had one. I just looked at them, thought, well, no. But man, razor sharp, lock blade. It, it does a lot. Combined with the uh, barrel rod, neck uh, lanyard, neck knife setup, good to go. <clears throat> then I have uh, my standard fire kit here. Uh, this is my um, <clears throat> Hudson Bay tobacco tin, full of char, full of. Uh, it's got a, uh, another ferro rod in it, uh, all kind of different other things. It's got flint and steel in it. It's got a lot of things to make fire, and that's what I use that for. <clears throat> and that's all that I have in there. Now, again, this is, you know, to go out for a day hike, say. I mean, when I say a day hike, I'm talking the whole day. <clears throat> and so I would have something to eat. Plenty of ways to make fire if I need to keep get warm um, or cook, something of the nature, something like that. In this top pouch here, I have my tinder pouch full of tinder, uh, tool poplar bark, uh, uh, birch bark, um, sh uh, shaggy birch, I believe it's called. Or I can't remember. It's like a paper birch ship peels all. You can peel it right off the tree. It's really good fire starter. <clears throat> got another ferro rod and my lighter. Normally, I will not go to the woods without tobacco, a lighter, and a ferro rod <clears throat> and a knife. So this could be the combination, although I would always like to have a little bit bigger knife than this. This is more of a backup, small task uh, blade. <clears throat> anyway, that's all that's in there. Then look down here, I have a map of the woods that I'm going to. <clears throat> it is, um, you know, probably about uh, 10,000 acres, I would say. But I uh, got a map of that. And then self-defense purposes, I have a 
Smith and Wesson Bodyguard. Uh, I just run them one clip. I got seven or one magazine. I got seven rounds. Uh, nice little gun, laser at that. Um, awesome little gun. And um, the thing about I like about this, I can throw it in my <clears throat> coat pocket, pants pocket, whatever. Lightweight. I got seven rounds. It's very accurate. It's a 380. Uh, plenty of power to stop someone if needed or, and or stop an animal if needed uh, you know in the North American well not North America but uh, the Eastern Woodlands say <clears throat> so that always always have some kind of weapon with me when I go to the woods if possible that's all I have in here but this is the concealed carry it's velcroed up here it's padded here so you cannot really see any printing with the gun in here. So that's a pretty nice feature. Um, going into the main pouch. Again, now here I have this gold it's, uh, locked in with on itself. Again, you do have these compression straps that you can use and cinch it down. Got plenty of room in here left over. You can see the, the roll here it's about eight inches at least what I have in here I got a fleece uh, shirt <clears throat> got a uh, wicking shirt I have my raincoat rain jacket not heavy duty very lightweight it's a Kuyu um, I can't believe I can't remember what it's called it's a Kuyu. Um, it's the cheaper. Uh, it's the cheapest of the ones they make, but it's a really high quality, real high quality, made well. Um, works great. Very lightweight. Here, like I said, I would be cooking some ramen, maybe some uh, some tuna, something like that. Whatever, some kind of soup, maybe. I have my uh, trusty. MSR, as you were, um, it's a seagull pot. <clears throat> I keep it in this bag because once you cook with it, you know, you don't want to put it back in your pack with it being all sticky and yucky and whatnot. And, but here it is. I'll tell you what, guys, uh, these things are amazing for a pot, two, about two quart pot, I believe. Uh, you got your handle, your lid. You can cook in your lid if you wanted to. Uh, you can also take those fish spreaders, <clears throat> link it in here. You have a little frying pan. I do have some coffee in there. Pack of coffee. But yeah, these MSR uh, pots, man, great. And you know, you can jam these for uh, <clears throat> smaller items as well. Like I could probably take this whole kit and put in there the backup knife, the a lot of this stuff would fit in here to carry it through the woods if needed. <clears throat> okay, so here, the next item, uh, 10 by 10 poncho. Uh, this is from, um, I can't remember who I got this from. It's a... Damn, it's a popular. Here it is. Hold, hold, hold one, hold one. Tag to the rescue. It's uh, from the uh, Bushcrafter USA. 10 by 10 um, <clears throat> tarp, so nylon tarp. Really nice, lightweight for the most part. Um, like I said, 10 by 10, just stay out of the weather. <clears throat> Here, I have my Delta Whiskey Bravo rig. Now, when I got when I would make it to the woods, I would go ahead and take this off and sling it. I uh, usually carry it, uh, Baldrick carry over, like so. But here you have the Delta Whiskey Bravo badass blade, shall I say, uh, designed by Doug Wilson, made by Mike Wallace of Wallace Edge Tools. I did a review on this, uh, man, I, I don't even know, I can't even express how badass this is, great chopper, 
You can do a lot of fine tasks with it. It's got the churro here to get down on it. Um, yeah, does a lot of things. Really nice. I'm not going to lose it out of this sheath. Yellow Hot Custom Kydex sheath. Awesome. And then I have my 6 inch Rick Lindsay ferro rod and my um, Surge Leatherman. The only one that I would use per se. Then I have a survival kit, survival tin here, outdoor survival tin in the back. I've done a complete review on this. Make sure you check it out. It's on my channel. Uh, great item. And then I have in here as well my jet boil. Um, since moving to Illinois and <clears throat> the communist county of Cook County, um, you know, you're not allowed to do a lot of things in these uh, parks and stuff. They have a lot of fantastic parks here, um, hiking trails and all that good stuff, but you can't do a damn thing really. You can't hunt, you can't, you can fish, but you can't hunt, um, can't build fires per se out, open fires. So really the jet boils my rescue there and really comes in handy for that. And so jet boil. And, and that's all that's in the main pouch. Now, I showed you already that it has a separated felt lined backing in here. And you can access that through zipping here, or you can also access it right down through the back here. So I do have a 3.3 Gorilla brand trash bag. <clears throat> and then I have my journal. Uh, various things, things I'm doing on YouTube, notes I'm taking about um, other stuff, just all kind of notes, things I write down, I'll go back and read it later. And so that's what I'm doing. That's all I have in here. Uh, just let me check one thing. I should have a pin in here. Uh, you have this little admin area, no pin. So I forgot to put a pin in it. But anyway, you get the idea. This is a, a day hike, like I said. If I got lost or something, I got, you know, again, I have a little bit of food. Um, if I got lost, I have plenty to go on. But the point is, it's not so much what's in the bag, but what this bag can carry. Let me adjust that camera right quick and show you. Uh, what I have here uh, quite a bit of stuff see sorry for the delay there but anyway you can see I mean it's quite a quite a bit of stuff in this bag I don't know the cubic inch like I said before but uh, it's a real nice bag <clears throat> highly recommended however I have pointing out, have pointed out the uh, negative parts of the design. Some people might like this pocket here. I don't care for it at all. But anyway, <clears throat> a little elastic or a little bit more material here to open up and make this a little bigger to get into. Uh, other than that, um, I really like it quite a bit. It's a very nice bag, made very well. It's a really nice bag. I highly recommend it. I'll give it a uh, seven and a half star rating. So <clears throat> if you uh, are looking for a nice pack with some nice features, I highly recommend it. All right, guys, this is Ed, top of the line training. All right, guys, this has been the review of the 511 Covert box pack. I hope you enjoyed the video as well. I really appreciate your subscription, your uh, likes and your share. Now, that being said, I just want to remind you or start the ball rolling. I have uh, something planned for a uh, thousand subscriber giveaway. <clears throat> I'm not gonna uh, disclose what that is yet, but I can guarantee you it'll be something pretty nice. 
Um, so, with that being said, I'll be back with more videos real soon. Make sure you check them out. Share, subscribe, like, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. God bless. Take care.